Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great Tuesday morning as usual. I bet you knew I was going to say that. I'm really tired of saying that to begin these videos, but at the same time, I started 2016 with the intention of doing that at the beginning of every single one of these videos. So that way, at the end of 2016, just like at the end of 2015, I can compile the beginnings of all these vlog videos and just go through it all. And it, I think it'd be kind of fun. Uh, but I'm really getting sick of saying that. So come 2017, I'm really going to blow you guys away with just a simple hello. 2017. That's crazy to think about. Uh, let's see, the last video was the bookcase video, and uh, the bookcase itself turned out great. It was uh, an unexpected project, something that was on the bucket list to get done for a while, something that I haven't really talked about much as far as in these vlogs. I always try to hint to, to a project or something that I'm going to do. haven't really mentioned that one much, uh, but it just felt like a good time to get it done, uh, simply because I'm tired of looking at books that were sitting on the floor. My wife is an avid book reader, as I said previously, and she really enjoys reading, and we reading is less expensive than woodworking, so she can keep reading all she wants. Uh, a lot of the questions on that particular video, uh, questions about the book series and titles that were on that shelf, I have no clue what kind of books are up there. Uh, my response to all those was, my wife reads books, I read the internet, and that's pretty much true. I read a lot on the internet, just not in book form. Uh, something else that was very common, uh, which is I never even thought of this, to um, please scribe the bookcase to the wall in the baseboard. Basically, cut out a little notch so it fits nice, so it fits nice and flush up against the wall, and it hugs the baseboard. Uh, no, for several reasons. Mainly because we move furniture around quite a bit. I don't like stale situations. Situations. As you can tell, uh, I've moved my shop around quite frequently. Well, I do the exact same thing with the household furniture, which my wife likes because every time that I do that, it's a complete cleanup and, and clean vacuum and, and uh, you know mop under furniture and stuff like that. Uh, but I move furniture around quite a bit, so odds are it's not going to be in that exact location. And as a matter of fact, it is not in the location that I shot the outro to the video. It's actually in the location where the sofa table is, or where the sofa table was when I shot the outro to that video, and that's actually in the position of where the bookcase was in the outro of that video. I moved, like I said, furniture around quite a bit. Now, in its place, it does have that same baseboard, but I don't want to cut out any part of the bookcase to make it, um, to make it specific to that room, to that baseboard setup, because what if we move? What if we move into another house and it doesn't have that exact same baseboard setup? I don't want to have to deal with uh, an ugly, odd-shaped whatever. I'm totally cool with it not touching the wall. And as a matter of fact, I would prefer that it not touch the wall. Any type of furniture that touches a latex painted wall for quite a long time ends up damaging the wall in some way. Um, which was another question on the latex paint. Am I worried about stuff sticking to it if you set it there for long periods of time because latex paint is somewhat soft. I haven't had a problem with this particular paint that I'm using, which is just, uh, this is Valspar Project Perfect Latex Enamel. Uh, not sponsored by Valspar or anything, not a sponsored endorsement, but uh, this is what I use and I have, I've had good results with it. Um, so far, nothing has stuck to the paint. Another topic was the way I attached the top. And I'd like to cover that into a, a separate video by itself, talking about wood movement, maybe on my second channel, this channel. Um, so I will address that in further detail, but I don't think I know for a fact that the way I attach the top is typically seen as not the way to do so because it does not allow wood movement. However, everything is circumstantial and it's such a small piece of wood, it's not that wide, it was really, really dry. Uh, to begin with and a couple coats of latex paint to seal it. It's not going to move. Like I said, I'll get into that further in a, uh, I mean, it's going to move. Wood always moves, but it's not going to move in any significant measurable amount. I'll get into that in another video and uh, show you some examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, I want to, on the second channel, kind of boost things up uh, throughout the end of the year. So I've got four or five other items to uh, make videos on that I, I think will, will, will work really well. Um, the last thing on the bookcase video was uh, how do I shoot, how do I know my nail gun's not going to bend the nails in one way or the other? Sometimes nails shoot out the side. Uh, John Heiss put out a video which was really enlightening about the way that um, 
these brad nails are manufactured on the bottom part of the brad nail along the whole length of the strip. If you take that length of brad nail and go this way with it, then you'll have a V down at the bottom. Well, the V is going to want to push it one way or the other. If it snags on a piece of wood or, or a hard spot or something like that, it's going to go off to one side. So if you shoot it, shoot the nail in such a way uh, that the nail wants to go left or right into the panel at which you are shooting into. And my camera battery just died, so hopefully I think I think I got the end of that. Basically, if your nails in your nail gun are in this position vertically, then shoot them into the board like so. Don't orient the gun so that it's shooting in this way. Orient the gun so it's like this. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll post a link to John Heiss' video where he probably explains it better than I do. I haven't watched that video in a while. Uh, next up on my little list, uh, a lot of questions still about the computer armoire, armoire, arm war, computer arm war that I mentioned a couple of vlog videos ago uh, and asking if I'm going to build it or when. Yes, it's still in the cards to build, but there's still some budget slash planning uh, dilemmas. So my objective was to build it sometime in October. Uh, that's more like looking, more or less looking closer towards like uh, uh, after the holidays. So it's going to be an in-depth build. And not only that, I don't want to even start on it until number one, it's completely planned out so I can follow my own plan, makes shop time so much easier. And number two, I want to design a matching set of office furniture. So it's going to be the armoire, armoire, and the computer desk, which will just be a regular desk for my wife to use her laptop on, which she rarely ever uses. So it's more or less going to be a writing desk slash laptop desk, and then a couple file cabinets, uh, and then there's something else. Anyway, regardless, guaranteed those three, I want to build an office furniture set that all matches. And before I even start on any of it, it all has to be planned out and I need to decide on the final species of wood. I would really, 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 really like to build it out of some nice hardwood leaning towards cherry. However, if budget constraints continue um, through the holidays or whatever, I may, uh, just, I may just do it out of quarter sawn pine like I did my... Uh, bedroom furniture set, the tall chest of drawers and then the blanket chest. That turned out great. I'm really satisfied with the way that that looks and with the outcome of it. And it was inexpensive because it's just pine. Um, so you can make pine look good. Uh, it's just a matter of cutting out all the defects and crap and working with the nice quarter sawn pieces. Uh, next up is uh, any suggestions for Tool Talk videos. Tool Talk series kind of fizzled out and died because I just don't know what else to really talk about other than uh, a couple things that are reoccurring questions like my assembly table, modified polk table, whatever you want to call it, uh, my hand planes, and then my sharpening setup. And there's one more on my list that I don't have wrote down, uh, but I definitely want to get those shot and scheduled um, within the next, after my trip, within the next couple months or so. Um, but if you have anything else that you'd like uh, for me to discuss that I have here in the shop, then let me know, and I'll be sure to uh, write down your advice and, and what you want to what you want me to blab on about. So uh, that would be great. Also, I am traveling this week. This week on Thursday, I will be driving to Cincinnati or Covington, Kentucky. Well, actually, I'll be staying in Cincinnati for Woodworking in America, and that's a uh, a three-day event. I will be there for the first two. The third day is just nothing but classes. Uh, on Saturday night, after the show, after the, the marketplace, myself, myself, April Wilkerson, and Nick Ferry, all three of us are going to be there. We are going to head out to the Moreland Lager House. It is right across the bridge into Cincinnati. According to Google Maps, it's a 17-minute walk. Of course, you could drive. Uh, we will be there after the show or after the marketplace, 6 o'clock until whenever, something like that. And then the following week, I'm actually leaving Cincinnati to drive to Michigan, and I will be in Michigan for a full week. Uh, myself, David Pachuto from MakeSomething.tv, and then uh, Tyler G. Oh, oh, crap, I forgot if his name is DIY Tyler or Tyler G here on YouTube. I'll post links to both of those guys down below anyway. Um, but we are going to do another little get-together get in the Livonia area. As a matter of fact, it's going to be at Dave & Buster's um, in Livonia. Don't quote me, but I think it's at like 275 and 7 mile or 275 and 8 mile, something like that. Uh, I'll post links to both of those places where we're going to do those 
meetups. And if you guys want to come out and talk shop, it's so much fun to do that with everybody uh, and just casual, fun environment. So I'm looking forward to both of those. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the next two weeks of videos, because I will be out of the shop, are going to be Wisconsin trip videos, which are some pretty fun projects. It was a lot of fun going to Wisconsin and hanging out with April Wilkerson and Nick Ferry. And we shot a bunch of stuff, and I have not released any of the footage yet. Um, so this weekend will be a collaboration video with those two fine folks. And they will also have accompanying videos that you guys need to check out. And then the following week will be another Wisconsin video. Skip one or two weeks, and then the final Wisconsin video. So those are starting to play out. It's just a matter of scheduling and getting some other stuff done before then so we have some reference material that we actually talked about in the videos. Hopefully that makes sense. It all will once it all starts to be published. Uh, that's it. You guys take care. Have a great day, and I will hopefully see you guys in Cincinnati. If not, then I'll talk to you guys later, or see you in Livonia. If not, then I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. See you later.